This story is something out of a movie. A reputed Italian mob boss on the run was hiding in plain sight as a pizza chef. From drug trafficking to money laundering, extortion to arms smuggling, powerful mafia families still exist in 2023. These powerful mafia families hold sway in a number of cities around the world, striking fear into the hearts of anyone who crosses their paths. In this video, I present to you some of the most powerful mafia families in 2023. Indrangheta. How important is this town to the Indrangheta? This is the house of the Indrangheta. Their families live here. The wives and the children of the bosses. The mafia controls the territory. The roots of the Andrangheta can be traced back to the 18th century in Calabria, Italy. Originally a rural criminal organization, it operated within the confines of the region, engaging in activities such as smuggling and extortion. However, it was in the 1950s that the Andrangheta began its rapid expansion, venturing beyond Italian borders and establishing a global network of criminal activities. Today, the Andrangheta has a presence in various countries around the world, including Albania, Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Colombia, Germany, the Netherlands, Malta, Slovakia, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, the United States, and Uruguay. Its global reach and influence have made it one of the most powerful and feared criminal organizations on the planet. So how did the Indrangheta manage to expand its operations so extensively? One key factor is its privileged relationship with South American cartels. This alliance has allowed the Indrangheta to establish a strong foothold in the international drug trade, surpassing even the infamous Sicilian Cosa Nostra. The Indrangheta's involvement in drug trafficking has been a major source of its wealth and power. With a turnover estimated at 44 billion euros, it has become a major player in the global narcotics trade. The syndicate controls every aspect of the drug supply chain, from production to distribution, ensuring its dominance in this lucrative market. But drug trafficking is just one facet of the Indrangheta's criminal empire. The organization is also heavily involved in arms trafficking, money laundering, racketeering, extortion, loan sharking, and prostitution. Its diversified portfolio of illegal activities allows it to generate generate immense profits and maintain its stronghold in the criminal underworld. The Andrangheta's expansion into other countries has been facilitated by its ability to infiltrate and corrupt various sectors of society. It has established connections with politicians, businessmen, and law enforcement officials, enabling it to operate with relative impunity. In Canada, for example, the Andrangheta has formed alliances with other criminal organizations and controls Italian-Australian organized crime. It has established a strong network in the Greater Toronto Area, where it engages in various criminal activities, including drug trafficking, extortion, and money laundering. In Australia, the Andrangheta has been involved in the fruit and vegetable industry, using it as a front for their illicit operations. In 2008, the syndicate was linked to the importation of a large ecstasy hall, further solidifying its presence in the country. The Andrangheta's expansion into Europe has also been significant. In Germany, the syndicate has used the country as a base to invest cash from drugs and weapons smuggling. They have invested in hotels, restaurants, and houses, particularly particularly in the Baltic coast and the eastern German states. In Malta, there have been allegations of Andrangheta involvement in illegal activities, including money laundering and gaming. The syndicate's ability to infiltrate legitimate businesses and exploit legal loopholes has allowed it to further expand its operations. The Andrangheta's global reach has not been without controversy. In Slovakia, investigative journalist Jan Kuciak was murdered while investigating Slovak connections with the Andrangheta. This shocking event shed light on the syndicate's influence and the dangers faced by those who dare to expose its criminal activities. Despite the efforts of law enforcement agencies worldwide, the Andrangheta continues to thrive and expand its criminal empire. Its vast wealth, extensive network, and ability to maintain secrecy and loyalty within its ranks make it a formidable and resilient criminal organization. The Andrangheta operates under a hierarchical structure that ensures a clear chain of command and facilitates the smooth operation of the organization. At the top of the hierarchy is the Kapakraman, the supreme leader who holds ultimate authority and makes key decisions for the syndicate. Below the Kapakraman are the Kapobastones, who act as regional bosses and oversee multiple Indrine or local branches. These Kapobastones are responsible for maintaining order within their territories and resolving any disputes that may arise. Within each Indrina, there are various ranks including Trecortinos, Vangelistas, Santistas, Scaristas, and Camaristas. Each rank has specific responsibilities and duties within the organization, ensuring a division of labor and specialization. The Andrangheta's hierarchical structure is not just 
just about authority, it also serves as a means of maintaining loyalty and enforcing discipline. The organization operates under a strict code of conduct known as Omerta, which emphasizes loyalty, secrecy, and silence. Omerta requires members to prioritize the interests of the Indrangheta above all else. Loyalty to the organization is paramount, and members are expected to remain dedicated and obedient, even at the cost of their own lives. Secrecy is another fundamental aspect of Omerta. Members are forbidden from discussing the organization's activities with outsiders or cooperating with law enforcement agencies. Breaking this code of silence is considered a grave offense, punishable by death. The Andrangheta's ability to maintain secrecy and loyalty within its ranks has been a key factor in its longevity and success. This code of conduct creates a culture of fear and intimidation, making it difficult for law enforcement agencies to gather evidence and dismantle the syndicate. Cosa Nostra. And now to a big mafia takedown today. The FBI, NYPD, and other agencies zeroed in on reputed members and associates of the Colombo crime family. More than a dozen arrests made here, including the man prosecutors say is the Colombo crime boss. For decades, the Cosa Nostra has been synonymous with power, violence, and secrecy, captivating the imaginations of people worldwide. Operating on the island of Sicily since the 19th century, Cosa Nostra has established itself as a formidable criminal organization involved in activities such as protection racketeering, extortion, and drug trafficking. The Cosa Nostra Mafia originated in Sicily, an island off the coast of Italy, and the word mafia is believed to have Arabic roots. The organization was born out of a need for protection and arbitration services. In a society where the police and courts were often unreliable. Various gangs came together under a common brand, providing a sense of security and order in an otherwise chaotic environment. The Mafia's main activities revolved around protection racketeering, resolving disputes between criminals, and overseeing illegal agreements and transactions. These activities allowed the Mafia to establish control over various territories, with each family or clan claiming dominance over a specific area. Members of the Mafia refer to themselves as men of honor and are commonly known as mafiosi. They adhere to a strict code of conduct known as Omerta, which emphasizes loyalty, secrecy, and respect for authority. This code of silence and secrecy forbids mafiosi from betraying their comrades to the authorities, further strengthening the bonds within the organization. Throughout its history, the Mafia has been involved in a wide range of criminal activities, from protection racketeering and extortion to vote-buying and narco-trafficking. The Mafia's influence has extended into various sectors of society. Their involvement in bid-rigging, loan-sharking, kidnapping, and even murder has solidified their reputation as a force to be reckoned with. The Mafia's power and influence have not gone unnoticed by Italian authorities. Over the years, the organization has faced crackdowns and suppression, including efforts by the fascist regime under Benito Mussolini to destroy it. However, the Mafia has proven to be resilient, adapting to changing circumstances and finding new avenues for criminal activities. The Mafia's history is also marked by violent conflicts, such as the First and Second Mafia Wars. These wars, characterized by intense power struggles and territorial disputes, disputes resulted in numerous deaths and arrests. The Mafia's ability to maintain its operations and survive these conflicts is a testament to its resilience and organizational structure. In recent decades, law enforcement efforts, including the Maxi trial in the 1980s, have led to the conviction of many mafiosi and a decline in the organization's power. However, the Mafia continues to exist and exert influence in certain areas. Its impact on Sicilian society cannot be underestimated as it has shaped the social and economic landscape of the region. In 2023, Three, the Cosa Nostra is still a force to be reckoned with, and several powerful Mafia families dominate the criminal landscape. Camorra with a history dating back to the 17th century, the Camorra has established itself as a formidable force involved in drug trafficking, racketeering, counterfeiting, and money laundering. To truly understand the power and influence of the Camorra, we must first explore its rich history and origins. Our story begins in the region of Campania, specifically in the city of Naples, Italy. It was here that the seeds of the Camorra were sown. The origins of this criminal organization can be traced back to the turbulent social and political climate of the time. Naples was a city plagued by poverty, corruption, and lawlessness. In this environment, various criminal groups emerged, seeking to exploit the chaos for their gain. These groups eventually coalesced into what we now know as the Camorra. The early Camorra members were primarily involved in petty crimes, such as theft and extortion. However, as the organization grew in size and power, so did its ambitions. The Camorra began to expand its activities into more lucrative ventures, such as smuggling and illegal gambling. By the 19th century, the Camorra had firmly established itself as a force to be reckoned with. 
with. It had developed a complex network of clans, each led by a powerful boss. These bosses wielded immense influence over their territories, controlling everything from politics to the local economy. One of the key factors that contributed to the rise of the Kimura was its ability to adapt and evolve. The organization constantly reinvented itself, adapting to the changing times and finding new avenues for profit. This adaptability allowed the Kimura to survive and thrive for centuries. Throughout its history, the Kimura has been involved in a wide range of criminal activities. Drug trafficking, racketeering, counterfeiting, and money laundering became the organization's bread and butter. The Kimura's reach extended far beyond the borders of Italy, with operations in other European countries and close ties to South American drug cartels. However, it is important to note that the Kimura's influence was not limited to the criminal underworld. The organization infiltrated local governments, exerting control over politics and influencing key decision-making processes. This deep-rooted influence made it difficult for law enforcement to dismantle the Camorra. Over the years, the Camorra has formed alliances with other criminal groups, such as the Sicilian Mafia, Indrangheta, and Sacra Corona Unita. These alliances allowed for the sharing of resources, expertise, and networks, further strengthening the Camorra's position in the criminal underworld. Despite efforts by law enforcement to combat the Camorra, the organization continues to thrive. Its complex structure and decentralized nature make it difficult to dismantle completely. However, authorities have made significant strides in targeting key members and disrupting their criminal activities. Now we turn our attention to the most powerful Kimura families in 2023. These families have risen to the top of the criminal hierarchy, wielding immense power and influence within the organization. The first family on our list is the Liziardi clan, known for their dominance in drug trafficking and money laundering. Led by boss Antonio Liziardi, this clan has established a stronghold in Naples and its surrounding regions. Their connections extend beyond Italy, with ties to South American drug cartels and a significant presence in Spain. Next, we have the Malardo clan, led by boss Raffaele Malardo. This family has a strong presence in the Campania region, particularly in the city of Caserta. The Malardo clan is involved in various criminal activities, including drug trafficking, extortion, and illegal gambling. Their influence extends to the political sphere, with connections to local government officials. The Mocia clan, led by boss Pasquale Mocia, is another powerful force within the Camorra. This family has a reputation for its involvement in drug trafficking and racketeering. They have a significant presence in Naples and have expanded their operations to other European countries, such as the Netherlands and Romania. Our next family is the Contini clan, led by boss Salvatore Contini. Known for their involvement in counterfeiting and money laundering, the Contini clan operates primarily in Naples and the surrounding areas. They have established connections with other criminal organizations, including the Russian Mafia and Chinese triads. Moving on, we have the Polverino clan, led by boss Giuseppe Polverino. This family has a strong presence in Spain, particularly in cities such as Alicante, Tarragona, Malaga, and Cadiz. The Polverino clan is heavily involved in drug trafficking and money laundering, making them a formidable force within the Camorra. These most powerful Camorra families in 2023 represent the pinnacle of power within the organization. Their activities span a wide range of criminal enterprises, from drug trafficking to money laundering. Their influence extends beyond Italy, with connections to other criminal groups and operations in various European countries. Yakuza the Yakuza had infiltrated the stock market, real estate, airport management, and even nuclear power stations. These violent groups were everywhere, in key sectors of the economy. In the shadows of Japan's history, a clandestine organization emerged known as the Yakuza. With a history dating back centuries, the Yakuza have evolved into one of the most powerful and feared criminal syndicates in the world. Today, we will take a journey through time to uncover the origins and evolution of the Yakuza. The roots of the Yakuza can be traced back to the Edo period in the 17th century. During this time, Japan was undergoing significant social and economic changes, leading to the rise of a new class known as the Chonin, or townspeople. As the Chonin sought protection and security in the rapidly changing society, they formed mutual aid groups called Machiyako, which laid the foundation for what would become the Yakuza. The Yakuza's influence spread across Japan, with different factions emerging in various regions. Notably, the Kansai region, including cities like Osaka and Kyoto, became a hotbed for Yakuza activity. The Yakuza families in Kansai, such as the Yamaguchi Gumi and the Sumiyoshi Kai, would later become some of the most powerful 
powerful and influential in the Yakuza world. In the early days, the Yakuza operated as vigilante groups, providing protection and enforcing their own version of justice in their communities. They upheld a strict code of conduct known as the Yakuza no Michi, or the Way of the Yakuza, which emphasized loyalty, honor, and respect. Over time, the Yakuza transformed from vigilante groups into organized crime syndicates, engaging in various illegal activities to amass wealth and power. They became involved in gambling, prostitution, and extortion, solidifying their grip on the criminal underworld. The Yakuza's influence extended beyond the realm of crime. They infiltrated legitimate businesses, including the Japanese real estate market, banking sector, and even politics. Through their connections and financial power, they exerted control and manipulated the economic and political landscape of Japan. One of the most iconic symbols of the Yakuza is their intricate tattoos, known as Irizumi. These tattoos, often covering the entire body, serve as a mark of identity and loyalty within the Yakuza world. Each tattoo tells a story, representing the individual's rank, achievements, and allegiance to their family. Today, the Yakuza continue to operate in the shadows, adapting to the changing times and facing new challenges. While their influence has declined in recent years due to legal developments and changing market opportunities, they still engage in criminal activities, including drug trafficking and human trafficking. At the heart of the Yakuza lies a strict hierarchy, with an Oyabun, or boss, at the top and Kobun, or gang members, at the bottom. This hierarchical structure mirrors the traditional Japanese social order, emphasizing respect, loyalty, and obedience. The Oyabun holds absolute authority and is revered as a father figure by the members of the family. They make all the major decisions and dictate the direction of the Yakuza's operations. Loyalty to the Oyabun is paramount, and disobedience is met with severe consequences. Becoming a member of the Yakuza is not a simple task. It involves a rigorous initiation ceremony known as Sakazuki. During this ceremony, the prospective member must swear an oath of loyalty and commit to upholding the Yakuza's code of conduct. The Yakuza are known for their unconventional rituals, one of which is the Yubitsume, or finger-cutting punishment. This ritual is performed as a form of atonement or punishment for a member who has committed a grave offense. By severing a portion of their little finger, the member demonstrates their remorse and loyalty to the family. Rituals play an essential role in Yakuza culture, extending beyond the realm of crime. They engage in traditional Japanese practices such as the tea ceremony to maintain a sense of cultural heritage and discipline within their ranks. These rituals serve as a reminder of their roots and provide a sense of unity among Yakuza members. The Yakuza's fascination with tradition and honor is also evident in their affinity for samurai culture. Some Yakuza members study martial arts and practice with traditional weapons like the katana. This connection to the samurai ethos further reinforces their image as modern-day warriors, bound by a strict code of conduct. The hierarchical structure and rituals of the Yakuza create a sense of order and discipline within their ranks. These traditions, although unconventional, serve to maintain loyalty, respect, and a distinct identity among Yakuza members. Solnsevskaya Bratva Founded in the late 1980s by Sergei Mikhailov, a former waiter turned criminal mastermind, the Solnsevskaya Bratva quickly established their dominance in the underworld. With strategic alliances, ruthless tactics, and a global reach, they have become an unstoppable force, infiltrating legitimate businesses and even forging connections with politicians. But how did they become the epitome of organized crime? Let us show you. Our story begins in the late 1980s, a time of immense change and turmoil in Russia. As the Soviet Union crumbled, a power vacuum emerged creating fertile ground for criminal organizations to flourish. It was during this chaotic period that Sergei Mikhailov, a former waiter with a cunning mind, laid the foundation for what would become the Solnsevskaya Bratva. The Solnsevo district of Moscow, strategically located near major transport hubs, became the breeding ground for the Solnsevskaya Bratva's rise to power. Sergei Mikhailov saw an opportunity to capitalize on the lucrative car import business. He knew that control over this industry would pave the way for immense wealth and influence. To solidify their position, Mikhailov and his associates recruited local unemployed young men, offering them a sense of purpose and belonging within the criminal underworld. These foot soldiers became the backbone of the Solnsevskaya Bratva, executing their leader's orders with unwavering loyalty and ruthless efficiency. The Solnsevskaya Bratva's reputation grew rapidly, thanks in part to their association with the notorious thief-in-law, Jemal Kachidze. Kachidze, a respected figure in the criminal world, enhanced the Bratva's standing and instilled fear in their rivals. With his guidance, the Solnsevskaya 
Kulisevskaya Bratva became a force to be reckoned with, expanding their criminal activities beyond the car import business. However, the path to dominance was not without its challenges. In the early 1990s, the Sonsevskaya Bratva faced a formidable opponent in the form of the Chechen Mafia. The clash between these two titans ignited a brutal gang war, leaving a trail of bloodshed and destruction in its wake. But the Sonsevskaya Bratva emerged victorious, solidifying their position as the undisputed rulers of the criminal underworld. With their rivals vanquished, the Sonsevskaya Bratva set their sights on expanding their empire. The collapse of the Soviet Union presented them with unprecedented opportunities. They established relationships with corrupt politicians, buying their way into the corridors of power. This unholy alliance allowed the Bratva to operate with impunity, shielded by a web of political connections and financial influence. But their ambitions didn't stop there. The Sonsevskaya Bratva forged ties with the notorious criminal mastermind, Semyon Mogilevich. Mogilevich, known for his involvement in various illicit activities, provided the Bratva with access to resources and expertise that propelled their rise to power. With his guidance, they began to infiltrate the banking sector, enabling them to launder their vast sums of money and get closer to the oligarchs who controlled Russia's economy. As the 1990s drew to a close, the Solnsevskaya Bratva expanded their operations beyond Russian borders. Members were dispatched to key international locations, such as New York City and Atlanta, to control Russian mob activities abroad. They also established a significant presence in Israel, primarily for money laundering purposes. This global reach further solidified their status as the most powerful mafia family in the world. Today, the Sonsevskaya Bratva continues to operate under the protection of the FSB, the Russian State Security Agency. This unholy alliance between organized crime and the government has allowed the Bratva to engage in racketeering, extortion, and other criminal activities with little fear of prosecution. The Sonsevskaya Bratva's dominance in the criminal underworld is unparalleled. Their rise to power, marked by strategic alliances, ruthless tactics, and a global reach, has solidified their position as the epitome of organized crime in 2023. Gambino family. Members and associates of the family. On top of that, six individuals in Italy as part of a kind of a coordinated effort uh, in Sicily uh, arrested as well. One remains at large overseas. This effort, I think, surprised some folks because I think there's been a feeling in the general public that the uh, that the mafia in New York City is just not something that's relevant anymore. And this, with a long and complex history dating back to the early 1900s, the Gambino family has been at the forefront of the mafia world, dominating organized crime in New York City and beyond. From their origins in Palermo, Sicily, to their rise under the leadership of Carlo Gambino, this family has been involved in various illegal activities, including racketeering, extortion, fraud, gambling, money laundering, prostitution, and drug trafficking. The Gambino crime family all began with a group of mafiosi from Palermo, Sicily, who sought new opportunities in the land of opportunity. Ignazio Lupo and Giuseppe Morello were among the first to arrive in New York City, bringing with them the traditions and secrets of the Sicilian Mafia. They quickly established themselves as formidable figures in the criminal underworld, engaging in activities such as counterfeiting and extortion. However, their reign was short-lived, as they were soon imprisoned for their illicit activities. With Lupo and Morello behind bars, a new leader emerged to take control of the faction. Salvatore Toto d'Aquila, a cunning and ambitious mafioso, seized the opportunity to establish his dominance. Under his leadership, the faction became known as the d'Aquila crime family marking the beginning of the Gambino crime family's journey. D'Aquila wasted no time in expanding his criminal empire. He formed alliances with other Italian-American criminal organizations, forging connections that would prove invaluable in the years to come. The D'Aquila family quickly gained a reputation for their ruthlessness and efficiency, engaging in various illegal activities to amass wealth and power. However, the criminal landscape of New York City was a treacherous one, filled with rival factions vying for control. The D'Aquila family faced numerous challenges and conflicts, as other ambitious mobsters sought to undermine their authority. It was during this turbulent period that a rising star within the family would make his mark. Albert Anastasia, a Sicilian-born mafioso, emerged as a prominent figure within the D'Aquila family. Known for his brutality and cunning, Anastasia quickly rose through the ranks, becoming a trusted enforcer for the family. His reputation as a fearsome and efficient killer earned him the nickname, The Mad Hatter. Anastasia's rise to power coincided with a shift in the criminal landscape of New York City. The Prohibition era brought about new opportunities for organized crime, as bootlegging and illegal alcohol trade became highly profitable ventures. Anastasia seized the moment, expanding the family's operations into these lucrative enterprises. As the D'Aquila family continued to thrive, tragedy struck in 1930. Salvatore D'Aquila, the family's founder and leader, was assassinated in a power struggle with rival factions. This event marked a turning point for the family, as a new leader would soon
soon emerge to guide them through the turbulent years ahead. Carlo Gambino, a Sicilian-born mafioso known for his intelligence and strategic thinking, stepped into the leadership role. Under Gambino's guidance, the family underwent a transformation, adopting his name to become the Gambino crime family. With his keen, business acumen and ruthless determination, Gambino would lead the family to unprecedented heights of power and influence. Gambino's reign as boss of the family coincided with a period of great prosperity and expansion. He recognized the potential of the booming gambling industry and formed a partnership with Meyer Lansky, a prominent Jewish-American mobster. Together, they controlled gambling interests in Cuba, solidifying the Gambino crime family's presence on an international scale. But the family's power extended far beyond the world of gambling. They gained control of other crime families, forming alliances and exerting their influence over various criminal enterprises. One of their most notorious endeavors was the establishment of Murder, Inc., the enforcement arm of the Mafia. Under the leadership of Albert Anastasia, Murder, Inc. carried out countless hits and acts of violence on behalf of the Gambino crime family. However, the reign of Carlo Gambino would eventually come to an end. In 1976, he passed away, leaving behind a legacy of power and influence. His successor, Paul Castellano, faced internal conflicts within the family, leading to his eventual murder orchestrated by John Gotti, a rising star within the Gambino crime family. Gotti's rise to power marked a new era for the family. He embraced a more public persona, earning the nickname the Dapper Don for his stylish appearance and media attention. Gotti's leadership was marked by high-profile criminal activities and a brazen disregard for law enforcement. However, Gotti's reign would also come to an end. In 1992, he was convicted of murder and other charges, effectively ending his reign as boss of the Gambino crime family. His brother, Peter Gotti, took over as the head of the family, but the family's fortunes declined under his leadership. Nevertheless, the family is still going strong. On November 8, 2023, a 16-count indictment was unsealed at the federal court in Brooklyn, charging 10 members of the Gambino crime family with racketeering conspiracy, extortion, witness retaliation, and union-related crimes committed in an attempt to dominate the New York carting and demolition industries. This shows that this crime family is still going strong today. Genovese crime family. The Genovese crime family is the Ivy League of, of the five families. They're very intelligent, very sophisticated, and if they get it, they know. They understand how it's supposed to operate. You don't want to tangle with these guys. In the seedy underbelly of New York City, a criminal empire was born. The Genovese crime family, originally known as the Luciano crime family, traces its roots back to the early 20th century. It all began with the Morello gang, led by the infamous Giuseppe Morello, in the streets of East Harlem. The Morello gang was one of the first Italian-American criminal organizations in the city, laying the foundation for what would become the Genovese crime family. They were involved in various illegal activities, including extortion, gambling, and bootlegging. As the years went by, the family expanded its operations and gained more power. It was during this time that a young and ambitious man named Charles Lucky Luciano entered the scene. Luciano had a vision for the future of organized crime, and he would play a pivotal role in shaping the Genovese crime family. Luciano's leadership and strategic thinking propelled the family to new heights. Under his guidance, the family became involved in racketeering, murder, labor union infiltration, extortion, and illegal gambling. Luciano's influence extended beyond the family as he formed a alliances with other prominent mobsters, creating a network of power and control. However, Luciano's reign would not last forever. In 1936, he was convicted of running a prostitution ring and sentenced to prison. This marked a turning point for the family as Vito Genovese stepped in to fill the void left by Luciano's absence. Genovese was a ruthless and cunning leader who would leave an indelible mark on the family. Under his rule, the family transformed, adopting his name and becoming the Genovese crime family. Genovese expanded the family's criminal enterprise solidifying their control over various illegal activities. The Genovese crime family's influence extended beyond the streets of New York City. They maintained strong ties with other mob families, including the Philadelphia, Patriarcha, and Buffalo crime families. This network of connections allowed them to expand their operations and maintain their power and dominance in the underworld. Despite facing numerous legal challenges in the ever-changing landscape of organized crime, the Genovese crime family has managed to adapt and survive. They continue to operate and maintain their power Power, leaving a lasting impact on the criminal underworld. In August 2020, an indictment charged Circhio, along with Colombo family associate Francesco Frankie Russo, attorney Jason J. Curland, and securities broker Frank Smookler, with conspiracy, wire fraud, and money laundering. The indictment alleged that Curland, along with Russo, Circhio, and Smookler, swindled a staggering $80 million from jackpot winners in an illegal scheme of siphoning money from their investments. This audacious operation left the victims devastated and exposed 
discussed the lengths to which the Genovese crime family would go to amass wealth and power, but the illegal activities didn't stop there. In April 2022, another indictment was served, charging Capos, Nicholas Calisi, and Ralph Balsamo, soldiers Michael Messina and John Campanella, and associates Michael Pauli and Thomas Pauli with racketeering conspiracy involving illegal gambling and extortion. The indictment revealed that these defendants had been operating a criminal racketeering enterprise since at least 2011. Their illegal gambling operations and extortion schemes allowed the Genovese crime family to maintain its grip on various territories, further solidifying its power and influence. In February 2023, the news broke that all six defendants in the case had pleaded guilty to the racketeering charges. This development sent shockwaves through the criminal underworld, as it showcased the government's determination to dismantle the Genovese crime family and bring its members to justice. But the indictments didn't end there. In May 2022, exactly a week after the Khaleesi and Balsamo indictments, another indictment was served. This time it charged Capo Anthony Rom Romanello, soldier Joseph Celso, and small-time actor and family associate Luan Behetti with extortion and obstruction of justice. Romanello, who authorities state controls the family's Queen's crew, oversaw the extortion and intimidation of a Brooklyn restaurant owner. This brazen display of power and control highlighted the Genovese crime family's determination to maintain its dominance in the criminal underworld. As the indictments piled up, the Genovese crime family faced yet another blow. In August 2022, acting Capo Carmelo Carmine Polito, along with family soldier Joseph Macario, Genovese family associates Salvatore Rubino and Joseph Rutigliano, Bonanno family Capo Anthony Pipitone, Bonanno soldier Vito Pipitone, Bonanno associate Agostino Gabriele, and Nassau County Police Detective Hector Rosario, were indicted and charged with racketeering, money laundering, illegal gambling, conspiracy, and obstruction of justice. This joint operation between the Genovese and Bonanno families involved several illegal gambling operations, with front businesses in Queens and Long Island used to launder the illegal profits. The indictment revealed the extent of the family's reach and its collaboration with other criminal organizations. The recent activities and indictments surrounding the Genovese crime family serve as a stark reminder of their continued presence and influence in the criminal underworld. Despite legal challenges and law enforcement's relentless pursuit, the family remains a force to be reckoned with. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it, click on the cards on your screen for more.